Welcome to Caregiving Club On Air. This podcast is dedicated to the millions of family caregivers who want wellness tips and self-care solutions, who seek expert advice, and who want news about healthy aging and how to create well home design in our forever homes. I'm Sherry Snelling, a corporate gerontologist, author, and educator, a TV interviewer, host, and news commentator. I'm joining you from Southern California, where our interviews and news take us all across the country to explore the many ways to help you on your caregiving journey and to lift you up here at Caregiving Club On Air. So if you recall on the last episode we did in September, we we interviewed Steve Popovich, who is the um, founder, actually the CEO and president of Theora Care. Now, Theora Care is a company that uses AI and neural networking and ultra wideband technology. And Steve explains all that much better than I can. But they have a smartwatch that helps detect falls and predict falls. But they also have in this watch uh, a GPS tracker and then the ability for the person to instantly connect with their family member if they're lost or confused or whatever. So he mentioned a story in Detroit. And it was with a a woman, Dolores Stone, whose husband has Alzheimer's and had wandered off and how the the watch really saved his life. And I was so compelled by this story. I wanted to talk to Dolores. And so I did a quick interview with her. I think you're going to find this story really fascinating. She certainly describes what happened, describes her feelings as a family caregiver, and also talks about why technology we do need to embrace some of it to keep our loved ones safe and also give us a little peace of mind so with that here's my interview with dolores stone so i um am so appreciative to talk to dolores stone who you may remember her story when we talked to steve popovich from theora care but Dolores is going to tell us about a really amazing situation that she had with her husband with Alzheimer's and also using technology. And so, Dolores, I just want to welcome you to Caregiving Club on Air. Thank you. So, Dolores, let's start with, tell us how long you and Tom have been married and how long you've been living in your home there in the Detroit area. Okay, um, we've been married, this November will be 55 years, and we've lived in this house for 45 years. Wonderful. Yes. We're in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Sterling Heights, Michigan. And and I know from some of the footage that I saw on the Detroit news story about you, it looks like a beautiful area, although... When we get to the story, your husband didn't end up in a a truly beautiful (laughs) city. But but, but let me ask you this. So we know that your husband, Tom, uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Tell us about that. How long has he been living with the disease? And what did you know about Alzheimer's when you received that diagnosis? Well, his mother and aunt and uh, another uncle all had Alzheimer's. And so, and I've worked with Alzheimer's caregivers as a mentor. So I'm quite familiar with Alzheimer's and I first started noticing it probably 10 years ago, a little bit here, a little bit there, shortly after he retired. Of course, the first neurologist told me, there's nothing wrong with your husband. It's all you. But I knew better. But then he kept getting worse and worse. And then four years ago, I had to quit work and stay home because he needed 24-7 care being watched. I couldn't leave him alone anymore. So So that's... Basically. Yeah, and we know that, you know, 60% of Alzheimer's adults do wander. So was that something you were noticing with Tom? Was he wandering off a, a bit? The wandering really didn't start until maybe about a year year ago. We had a school across the street, and he would always go and walk around that school and come back. But then they tore the school down. Mm-hmm. Fenced off that 20 acres and are building a mammoth new school. And this caused a lot of confusion because right. all of a sudden his normal walk wasn't normal anymore. Right. So, um, you know, let's, let's get into the story that happened just a few weeks ago. And I want you to take us kind of through that day, step by step, but it started with 
you woke up in the morning and Tom wasn't there. So tell us what you were thinking and what happened next. I have ring doorbells on my doors. And I heard the doorbell go off. So I jumped up. He wasn't there. And so I, I went out and looked around the house. He wasn't there. So I came in and grabbed my keys and got my tracker out for my watch. I got the on my phone. It's on my phone. And it showed me he's a half mile down the road, down the end of the sub next to a seven lane highway. So I call him on that. That's wonderful about this phone. You can call him. I says, Tom, stay there. I'm coming with the car. Oh, I got to get to work. I got to get to work because he's constant hallucinations. I says, well, I'll come and drive you. Well, I, I was down there in like three minutes, but he's gone. He had crossed the seven mile highway, seven lane highway. And gotten over behind into an industrial area where no man goes because huh. there's lots of woods back there. And I, when I realized he was back there, I realized you have to have stickers on your car to get in there because it's gated. Somehow he got in there. But uh, so I called the police and right. I said, look, my tracker shows where he's at. Right. I, said, I only got 10 minutes left on this. And all he could say was, if you hadn't had that tracker, we would have never gone back there because nobody goes back there. He would have died back there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I mean, just hearing the story, crossing the seven lane highway, you know, and then getting into an area that no one would have ever probably thought about looking. No, they, I mean, they would have gotten, they would not have gone back there. Yeah. And so. Tell us a little bit. You mentioned the watch and you have the app on your phone. And this is from a company called Theora Care. And I think the watch is called Theora Connect. Correct. You mentioned a few things. So tell us about how the watch works, how you're able to kind of keep track of things on your phone. And you mentioned also being able to call him. Uh, tell yeah. us about that, how that whole thing works. Well, I'd like to insert here that I had other trackers. Okay. But they were all they were on his phone. They were all depending on him picking them up and taking them with him. Okay. So first of all, this watch goes on and can't come off. He didn't know how to take it off. I had to be the one to take it off. Okay. And then I have tracked him other times. This is this is the most dangerous time though. I had tracked him other times, and I could always go on my phone, push a button, and say, "Tom, I see you're such and such a place. Will you stay there till I get there?" Of course, that doesn't mean he did, but right. I could locate him. And then when I got there, I could relocate him and relocate him again until I got him. But that okay. watch gave me, would let me see right in front of which house he was. Right. So, you know, at midnight, sometimes I'd be out in the sub and he's three quarters of a mile away. And thanks to that watch, I could get on the right street. Then it was a matter of he didn't know who I was. It was a matter of coaxing him into the car. Right. So yeah, right. talking to him over it was good. Right. So one other time he got lost down by the grocery store down here, a place called Aldi's. And my neighbor lady happened to be down there. I got down there and I, he, he moves fast. He's fast. And I says, and, I wait, and he's 80, is he 80 years old? He's 80 years old, but he so walks he's fast. fast. He's pretty fast for an 80 year old. <laughs> yes. And I told her, I says, I think he's in the store. So we went in the store and he wasn't there. Uh -huh. He got out of the store somehow. When we were in, he got out. So we went out and uh, I'm trying to, there's a, a couple buildings there and I'm driving around and I'm just missing him all the time. And she finally called me. She says, I've got him. So I looked on the tracker. I could see where she was with him. I says, okay. She says, I'll walk him home. <laughs> but Yeah. Um, that's the beauty of these, these, you know, as you said, you can get them in different varieties. You know, sometimes I know people have had a GPS little pile they'll put in maybe like their mom's purse or something. But as you said, it's incumbent then of the person to take that with them. So having yeah. it on the watch is really helpful. How did you find out about the Fior Connect watch? How, how did you get connected to the watch? <laughs> well, a neighbor told me that her friend got one for their mother and so I could call my son of course we all have to have that electronic person in our life we went online and he we, we found it in the Alzheimer's thing and then he went over into uh, some Alzheimer's thing 
And then oh, okay. we went over into, I think you went over into Amazon. Okay. Yes. Amazon Alzheimer's there. store, I think, right? There's an online store for Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. products and devices and things. Okay, yeah. great. Yes. Well, that and and so I know you said this also in the Detroit news story. You said you know without this, as you said to us, we wouldn't yeah, have been able to him. to find him. And I know the police too have to be so happy about this because they brought out their canine unit, and I know the dog was able to to really find sniff it. sniff out your 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 husband exactly where he was because I think the GPS tracker will get you like within like fifteen feet or something, right? But he was in really tall brush i mean hard to see no, he was back there but because i had it we knew where to go we knew where right he was located. right uh, the the um tracker works good you, i've been able to trace him three-fourths of a mile from here okay and i'm sure i could go farther right but i just thankfully never had to try that out right <laughs> but, um but does it also get, is there any kind of alert if he, if he does go further? Like, is there any kind of like a little fence yeah, on, that you know? On my phone, there's a safety circle. You can set up what size, size, size that is. Okay. And my phone alerts me if they go outside of that safety circle, which I had about two tenths of a mile. Sure. So, sure. So, so that's about, really great. So you, you don't have to just all of a sudden go, wow, where's Tom? It's like you'll get a notification if maybe he's gone beyond that yeah. perimeter. As long as okay. I don't do the notification. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a, he has escaped many, many times. And several times before I got the watch, he escaped and got across another uh, five-lane highway. And we were I was on the phone making a police report when somebody – he had his watch on him, his phone on him, but his phone had gone dead, so we couldn't track him. Wow. Okay. And so this is before you got yeah, the pure care. That's what made me want to find this watch. <laughs> yes, yes. And he ended up getting in a stranger's car. Oh no. Oh. But it was a stranger that drove him around till he recognized uh, another place. And he says, If you let me out here, I can get home. Oh. But yeah. you know, then he got in strangers' cars twice. That's what made me say, I have to have something different talking to my neighbors. He says, there's a watch out there. Yeah. And they can't well, get it off. Yeah. Well, they, and that that's another thing, too. I know with a lot of Alzheimer's patients, you know, they want to take things off or, or whatever. <laughs> so you were saying that, you, you know, you have the ability to unlock it and take it off, right? Yeah. He couldn't figure out how, how, how to do it. So, you know, Dolores, this has been such a fascinating and really, thankfully, a wonderful ending to the story that very often, I know when I've talked to families of loved ones who have Alzheimer's, it ends tragically, um, you know, the, the police just don't even know where to start looking. And so at least there's, there's hope and help in this. What would be the message that you would want to give to other family caregivers out there, other families who have a loved one with Alzheimer's about how this technology is so important. First of all, it works. Not all trackers work good. You know, if you get more than three quarters of a mile away, you don't, you don't get anything. It works. Second of all, I can talk over it to him and, and stall him if possible. And then the idea that it showed geographically showed right where he was at. Mm -hmm. They knew he was, where he was at and they knew how far back he was at. Of course, he kept going farther after the time went on. But this one little point I want to put in here is that morning prior to Tom, two other people had wandered off and gotten lost. Mm -hmm. And they have a time limit. They searched for two hours and couldn't find these people. So then they go, they no longer are a person they searched for. They became a missing person and go on an alert. Okay. But because my tracker showed where he was at, they were able to find. Him. So there's two other lives that maybe. I don't know what happened to them. Mm. And all these big highways here in Metro, you know, yeah, because Alzheimer's people don't know to stop on the red light. Right, right. Or as you said, they, they, their surroundings have changed and, you know, they really don't know exactly where they at, are at. I know in the story, you were able to find Tom in just a little over an hour, right? Well, when I started going out to find him, 
I was able to find where he was at within 20 minutes. I okay. had to drive across the highway and drive around. And when, when it showed me where he was at, I knew I couldn't get there. Okay. So I had to call the police. Right. But so, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's in, instantaneous of when you can find him with that tracker. Right. And so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's helping your levels of stress and your levels of concern to know that you've got this technology that helps you. That technology saved his life. The policeman and the dog are actually getting awards for saving his life. That's how serious it was. So, yes. If it hadn't been well, for the watch, we wouldn't know where he was at. He probably would die because it's swampy back there. Yeah. And it's different. a different industry built there, so they don't use all that acreage back there. It just sits vacant. And there's a railroad track going through the middle of it. So who knows okay. what could have happened. Yes. Yes. I cannot say enough good. This watch saved a life. And I think talking to you maybe will help save another life or two. Or well, three. we are going to get your story out. That is why we did this with you today. We thank you so much, Dolores, for taking the time to talk to us and tell us your story. As I said, it's it's one of those stories that ends well, and we want that to be the story for every family who has a loved one with Alzheimer's. So yeah. thank you, Dolores. Uh, appreciate thank you, you talking to us. Yes, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Caregiving Club on Air. Please hit the subscribe button to listen to us on our newest channels, Amazon Music, Sirius XM, iHeartRadio, Pandora, as well as Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts and other listening channels. Check out all the resources and article links on our episode guide page found at caregivingclub.com. Just hit the podcast tab at the top or email us with comments and questions at podcast at caregivingclub.com. Thank you again for listening. Take care and stay well.